So um, I'm talking to Ian Morris, who you might not have heard of, but you certainly would have seen a lot of his stuff. He's the creator of The Inbetweeners. He's worked on Peep Show um, and, and many other um, classic British comedies. Um, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Um, thanks for being on. So you've got a new film coming out um, called The Festival, and anyone who hasn't seen the trailer should, should watch it now on YouTube. But first, I just want to get something out of the way that I'm sure everyone has asked you. Right. Um, is there going to be any more in between us? Um, unfortunately, I've uh, I've locked all the four in between us actors in the basement of my house, and I'm never letting them out until we get paid enough money. No, it's um, I don't know. I mean, we all get on with each other, and we'd all you know love to work together again. I think I'm not sure if it will be in between us or not, but um, I think you know, never say never. Basically, where we are at the moment, I'd say. Ah. Oh. That's oh, a typical answer. <laughs> well, I can't. I can't. I mean, if it was, if, if we started shooting next week, I'd say, yeah, yeah, we're doing one next week. We, ha- you know, it doesn't really work like that. So, uh, unfortunately, yeah. I can't. I, I would be lying if I said to you, it'll never happen, and I'd be lying if I said to you, it's happening next week. So, cool. well, we live in hope. Yeah, I live in hope. You know, but also yeah. this, the new film's quite good. I think you like the new film. You know. Yeah, of course. Uh, so it's it's called the festival, and uh, it stars Joe Thomas as well, right? Yeah, not not far from the Inbetweeners. Yeah, it's part of the Inbetweeners cinematic universe, if you like. There you go. So, in a nutshell, what is the festival about? It is about a guy called Nick and his best friend Shane, who go to a festival for the first time, meet a woman called Amy, and kind of sort of coming of age big comedy um, for ninety seven minutes, where there's you know all sorts of characters and. They meet all sorts of people and, you know, all sorts of things happen. Is that vague enough? That's, that's perfectly vague enough. <laughs> um, so it seems uh, like pretty, pretty slapstick, pretty much kind of sticking to the, your comfort zone in terms, of, in terms of comedy, right? Yeah, I think it's, I mean, I, you know, I guess the things that I found funny 10 years ago, I still find funny now, really. So it's, you know, when we did The Inbetweeners, so it's a similar sort of sense of humour, I think, as The Inbetweeners. It's got very different performers in it. I mean, Jermaine Clements in it and Noel Fielding's in it and, you know, as well as Joe and Claudio Doherty's in it and stuff. But it's very, uh, yeah, it's a, I guess it's a similar vein. It's definitely, I think if you watched it, you'd feel like it came from the same people who made The Inbetweeners, if that makes sense. Yeah, and I, I guess that, that's good for anyone that is a fan of, of The Inbetweeners. Um, yeah, I hope so. Because obviously Joe Thomas stars in it. Did you did you know that he was going to star in it, and and therefore did it did it kind of impede the writing, or or did it liberate you a bit in, in writing? Well, I mean, I didn't write this actually. Uh, two guys called Joe Parham and Keith Akushi wrote it. Mm. We we worked on the script with them, but no, we did a we did a read through um, of the film, and Joe came and read Nick as a favour. And at the end of it, he was so funny that the producer and the financiers were like, oh, "We just really really want Joe to do it." So mm. he kind of aced his own audition but the script, the script was in place when he um when he came on board but uh, but then you know obviously the script was then changed and rewritten and you know there was imp- a little bit of improv and stuff on set and things mm. so that's what happened there yeah um, and it's probably worth noting as well that this isn't like a big hollywood funded comedy it's uh it, you've done this pretty independently right yeah it's a totally independent feature yeah it's an independent feature it's sort of it's not like the lowest budget film you've ever seen in your entire life but it's relatively low budget uh, for, compared to Hollywood, but hopefully it looks, you know, it looks like a big, big film, and you know, hopefully it will play well in multiplexes, and people want to go and see it and feel a bit better and, you know, enjoy themselves and come out of it feeling a bit happier about life. That's, that's yeah. a dream. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, it's a British, it's a totally independent film. Yeah. And do you, did you think that that gives you a little bit more license to maybe be a bit sillier without having to think about necessarily like how many people are going to find it funny with you? Absolutely. I think it's, I always think about the audience, you know, or certainly I am always thinking about how to, you know, what's, what do the audience like? What do they not like? How, you know, what's, you know, how do I deliver what I think is funny that, that makes the most amount of people happy? But you certainly don't have to worry about, you know, offending certain sensibilities or being mm. told that the studio's got the project with so and so, so you can't make a joke about that person or you can't do this, you can't do that. You know, it's, it's definitely, definitely much more. Uh, freeing to be making independent films um, than it is with than Hollywood films, for sure. And obviously after the festival, you're, you're still editing, aren't you? So, um, I am still what, editing. I'm going back to the edit suite after this phone call. <laughs> oh, no. And how long did it take you then, like from shooting to, to getting this thing out? It's taken, I mean, from the start of the shoot, I think it was actually the 14th of August. And I think the film's released on the 14th of August. So from the first day of shoot to the, to the release date is, will be a year. Um, you know, so it's been a it's been a long old slog in many ways. Um, to get See, that to sounds get like it sounds like quite a, a quick turnaround, you know, to 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 make a whole film. 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not. I mean, it's, again, it's it's independent films, so you're you're kind of wrestling with the budget the whole time. The longer you spend doing something, the more expensive it is. Is is broadly how things work. Mm. So, um, you know, we do uh, we did both in between us films relatively quickly, quicker than this. Mm. And so for us, it's kind of a you know you get used to that way of working. Yeah, and do you find that you're enjoying directing now more than you enjoy writing, or or, or do you just sort of like zigzag between the two? Oh, I loved it. I mean, I love the chance of zigzag. I think it's a very, it's quite, quite different, and but also quite fun at the same time. It's nice to be able to, uh, you know, get a chance to do both things. And, and and I found it, I found it almost more pressure directing this someone else's script because I really wanted their script to to get the best, you know, for the jokes to work the best and have the best chance of being funny. So I was really, really constantly looking at their, you know, thinking to them, I don't, I hope I don't let the guys down. I hope I don't let the guys that, that wrote it down. And that, and that, I think, also came from, from you know not wanting people who directed my stuff to, to miss jokes or miss ideas. Yeah, I guess that's the benefit of directing your own work because you, you, you can kind of re-visualise as you write and it, it starts taking shape while you're putting pen to paper. Yeah, exactly right. It's exactly, I mean, it's, just, it's sort of like you know it inside out as you're directing it. You think, well, I know what the joke is here. I know what I'm looking for. Whereas when it's somebody else, you have to be really thorough and really make sure that you've understood exactly what the joke is and exactly where it's coming from, which, you know, you're reading sort of long scripts can sometimes be something you have to be sort of thorough about I guess yeah no pressure there no pressure no <laughs> unbelievable yeah just uh, no pressure no yeah pressure. and so what was your uh favorite favorite scene from the movie um there's a scene actually in a police station where Hamid who plays Shane and Joe who plays Nick are sort of just talking to each other and it's really quiet and it's just the two of them and uh I really like that one because I thought they both gave really lovely performances and it was because the rest of the film is so big and noisy and loud and you know hopefully funny mm. but um that's the scene that I always enjoy watching because I sort of think to myself it's just a sort of t- little two-hander from two guys so um that's one to look out for on the other end of the scale you know we shot you know, I don't know 70,000 people at Leeds for the finale of the film and I think that looks really spectacular so I'm sort of very proud of the ending as well so were you actually at Leeds Fest doing that? Yeah, we shot at Leeds and we shot at Bestival as well. Wow. Um, okay, well, obviously I know we're talking about the festival, but I have to do this with you, um, yeah. and I, I wouldn't um, spring it on you uh, without it being much more entertaining if I did so. Um, but we tend to play a game on the show called uh, Buy, Borrow or Bin, uh, which I guess is the Hollywood equivalent of uh, Snog, Marry, Avoid. Love it. So I'm going to give you three films. Uh, yeah. You've got to pick uh, which one you would buy and take home immediately, yes. uh, which one you'd borrow from a mate or maybe watch on TV, yes. and which one you would throw away uh, without even thinking about it. Gotcha. And I'm going to make it personal. Okay. So we've got The Inbetweeners, yes. The Inbetweeners 2, yes. and The Festival. Okay. So I'm going to buy The Festival. Of course. I'm going to borrow The Inbetweeners 2. And I'm going to bin the in-betweeners because I don't need it because everyone owns a copy and I can always borrow it off somebody. I can always uh, watch it on TV. That's a cop-out answer. Yes, of course a cop-out answer because you gave me an impossible question. <laughs> of course what it is. Expect, what do you expect me to say? <laughs> <laughs> of course. No, um, I love the in-betweeners. I'm sure I'm going to love the festival and I'm sure everyone else will as well. Um, so I, I can't wait for it. Um, Thank you so much. And when's it in cinemas? 14th of August. Wonderful. I will put it in my diary. Brilliant. Thanks so much. Let me Cheers. talk to you. Thank you very much, Ian. Okay, bye.